I just want to read this scripture for you. And let's see if we can extract some truth from God. And uh, just see what God will say to us tonight. As Apostle says, you have been dealing with the issue of faith over the last couple of weeks and months. And so there may not necessarily be a new word, but there sometimes can be a deepening of the revelation. And we want to pray today that God will reveal himself even in a mightier way as the word comes forth. So that we can cement the things that we have already uh, again for his honor and for his glory. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. For it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I want to say that one more time. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And this is where we would seek to extract from the word of God some of the Issues that we must be able in, 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 in a post-pandemic era, in a time when everything seemed to be getting right where it should be. And as we continue to advance the purposes of God. The scripture is telling us here that it, 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 it's a serious thing that we need to understand. Because the word of God has never been, it has never stopped being preached. In the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the confusion. In the midst of everything that has happened in the last two and a half years, you have not had an absence of the word of God. We, as a matter of fact, for many of us, because now we could have stayed at home and, and just log on on our devices, we may have had more word than we ever had before. So the problem for us or the situation we face is not the absence of the word of God. Am I here to talk to anybody tonight? And, and that's where we want to go. Because you see in our present generation. Uh, we were born into a time of relative peace. Uh, and prosperity in spite of the fact that many of us in the midst of all of that has not yet been able to maximize uh, our God-given potential. Many of us in the midst of the era in which we have been, have been born uh, have not yet been able to grow and develop and become uh, all that God wants us to be. And so we in many instances have found ourselves uh, given over to the prevailing philosophies of our land. We've been given over to, to idealism. We've been given over to humanism. We've been giving over to secularism. We've been giving over to paganism. Uh, just to name a few of the things that we may have given ourselves over in spite of the fact that the word of God is rich in the earth today. However, I've noticed something, Apostle Mary, in recent years, the situation has changed drastically. And the world and our world has begun to experience an increase in acts that has been very uncommon in the past of global terrorism. Acts of different types of things happening, political and economic, social, environmental and moral crisis has become unprecedented in our world today. In this last season here, it seemed like all that could be shaken is being shaken. 
Am I talking to anybody today? And so there is a shaking. There is a, an uneasiness taking place uh, in the world because there is an uneasiness even in the body of Christ because some people are very skeptical of what is next. What is going to happen next? Am I going to make it till the end of this year? Am I going to make it for some people till the end of this week? And people are confused about what is happening. The world has never seen anything like this before. Hallelujah. Everything in this world is crumbling. But one thing I want you to know tonight, that God is not dead. And so it's not that people are starting to believe that the foundation of this world system are not permanent, but we have recognized how, how fragile this system of the world, this sismos, system of this cosmos, how fragile it is. As a matter of fact, today you are here and tomorrow you're gone. We live in a fragile day. We live in a day when there seem to be less and less certainty as to what tomorrow uh, will bring. Uh, everything in this world is uncertain. Our lives are forever being reshaped. From what we know to what is now being developed. Anybody here have, 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 have some issues now trying to readapt? You have some issues because you, you've gone through some stuff in the last couple of years. And you're wondering, Lord, had it not been for your goodness, where would I have been? Hallelujah. But in the midst of that wondering, you are still saying, Lord, uh, you need to lead me. Because if you don't lead me, uh, I don't know where I will go. And that, that's, that's why we... We need to understand what God is saying to us tonight. This new millennium, hallelujah, has ushered the, world, the worldwide church into, I believe, Apostle Mary, an excellent, exciting, an excellent uh, new time, a new era. Because in the midst of the chaos, uh, in the midst of the crisis, uh, can I tell you something? That man's extremities uh, provide an opportunity uh, for the God of heaven uh, to manifest himself on the earth. Uh, so sometimes uh, the more extreme your circumstances uh, is the more you can trust in a God that is faithful am I helping you tonight church and so the more extreme the thing looks around us as a matter of fact pastor Mark some people in the midst of the extremity of life situations have found themselves being drawn closer to God because had it not been that extreme circumstance they would have left the church but thanks be to God because his word says that we ought not to think it strange for the fiery trial which are trying us as though something strange is happening but rejoice and that's what we need to do we need to rejoice in as much as we are partakers of the suffering of Christ stop looking at your present situation as if it's something strange it is not strange to us nor is it strange to God because God says in Isaiah chapter 46 and 10 that he created the end from the beginning so notice God is not surprised just look at your neighbor and say God is not surprised it may have taken you a little off but God is not surprised God is in control and so when we look at this text that we have read today it tells me for unto us the gospel hallelujah for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not 
profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. It seemed like that was an indictment on the people at that time. Come on somebody. It seemed like it was some kind of message that listen your issue is not the word. Your issue is not how much Apostle Mary, how much Pastor Rob, how much Pastor Mark has stood up here and preached. Your issue is not the absence of the word of God because if you understand what the Bible says, it says that listen, 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 the entrance of the word of God, it gives light hallelujah, so even when I'm in a dark situation when the word is delivered, there is light that comes into my life, in the midst of a wicked world, in the midst of a wicked generation, the Bible tells me, and David said it, uh, thy word uh, have I hid uh, in my heart uh, that I will not sin against thee. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you're going through. Uh, the word of God uh, has been released uh, over your life uh, and man shall not live uh, by bread alone, uh, but by oh, somebody help me this night, uh, but by every word uh, that proceed uh, from the mouth of God I, I just want to tell you today that your problem is not the word can I say it again because you may have taught uh, that you have lo you, you may have said I'm looking for another word hallelujah you know because we can be a bit spiritual junkie where we're looking for word upon word uh, but your problem may not be the next word uh, that you need to get it may be uh, that the words that you all have already gotten has not done anything for you uh, because you have not yet understood uh, how to mix it uh, with the faith of God God. Oh, somebody just lift your hand and just worship. Just worship your robo Santa. I feel some things breaking in the realm of the spirit right here. I feel some things just breaking. You see, you can't come into rest. You can't come into the peace of God. You can't come into that place where God guarantees you a level of security. If you get the word, but the word cannot stand by in itself. Can I tell you that God has a divine combo? Hallelujah. There is a divine combo that when you get the word, you need to mix it. I hope you get to dance by the end of this. I see my brother then start to mix it already because the problem, Pastor Rob, I've seen you preaching over online. I've seen you, Pastor Mark. I've seen my mother, Pastor, preaching. I've seen you all preaching. But sometimes it's not just the, the preaching, hallelujah, that makes the difference. It is your faith that has to come out. Oh my God, let's go into faith quickly and see what we can extract from the word of God so that we can just move along. Hallelujah, my God. The Webster's New World Dictionary used the word as faith is confidence. It is belief. It is to be convinced of or reliance or complete trust in. That's what the Webster's dictionary says hallelujah and the hebrew word hallelujah from which this word uh, faith derives uh, it's the word imuna oh my god imuna and it means firmness uh, and it means that which brings security come on somebody talk to me tonight uh, it means my god uh, a faithfulness stability uh, it means that which is steady uh, i love this one of the meanings because it says that it also means truth, hallelujah it means truth and virility and, and that's the thing I want you to understand that when I have faith I have 
confidence. When I have faith, I have my God, my reliance, or my complete reliance upon a thing, my God. I want you to see that the Greek word used for faith in this text in Hebrews, it talks about the word pistis, and it really talks about persuasion. It talks about giving credence to someone, my God. A moral conviction of a religious truth. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Don't miss this tonight. So what I am saying to you tonight in the name of Jesus is that faith comes to a person when he or she gives credence or trust my God that God is speaking truth through his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when the rhema is delivered, uh, that is what activates uh, your faith. Because faith, uh, it comes by what? Somebody help me. It comes by hearing. Uh, and hearing not just a story, uh, not just a fable, uh, not just history, uh, but hearing the active living uh, word of God. Uh, because the word of God, it is spirit and it is life somebody say hallelujah let me say that again in case you didn't get it the word of God it is spirit and it is life so when the word of God comes it has power it has prophetic implications it has presence the word of God can dismantle it can establish it can separate it can bring together it is the word of God that we need uh, in order to have the faith of God realized in our lives. Are you with me tonight church? Are you with me tonight, trumpet call? Oh my God, those of you that are joining us online, uh, we are grateful to God for you uh, because we want you to know uh, that you have had the word preached uh, day in, day and night. Hallelujah. We've had the word preached. Uh, some people, uh, because of this COVID, have added on services, my God, uh, just to keep the believers uh, in the word of God. Uh, so your issue is not the word. Let's look at the text again. For unto us was the gospel preached. Can I ask a question? Is the gospel or was the gospel preached unto you over the last two and a half to three years? Some of you are sure yet. Was the gospel preached to you? Have you seen results? Because many people have become in the midst of this situation now, Apostle, despondent. Let me use another word that people have become. Weary. So it's not that they are not in the word. They are in the word. But the word sometimes don't get in them. So we are going about our business, watch me, watch me now, watch me, in a way as if it's just a chore. Oh Lord Jesus. As if it's just church today again. They had youth meeting Saturday. You see youth man? Youth meeting man? I know, I know, I know. I know, my call. Facebook. That church again. It have, and you, you, you see despondency? You see weariness? There is no real zeal. Come on, somebody help me today. You're doing it, you know. But you're just doing it enough to clock your card. You know, you just go to work sometimes and just clock your card, but you're hiding all day. Somebody talk to me now, man. Especially when you're working for government. The public sector, you can't do that so much. But government, you clock your card and then you go, you buy lunch, you buy this, you buy that. You go by the store, you see what the store have, and then you come back. Hey, it's time to go home, you clock out again. Oh, it don't happen here in Jamaica, it's happening in Trinidad. 
So there is a level of despondency that have taken the body of Christ. There's a level of almost half-heartedness that have taken us so when we should be full of zeal expecting to see the glory of God we are in a place where we, we, we have to be and everything become hard and it becomes hard and the worship team has to go hard deeper and the people have to and so there is a greater demand on a few because many have not yet had the word mixed with faith. And that's the problem in this, in this season of the church. It's not that we don't have word. But we don't have enough of the word mixed with enough of the faith that God can release to us. Am I helping you tonight? I, see, I, I said it already. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. Uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. Watch what it says. Man shall not live. Uh, but it says, but what say it? The word is nigh, even in thy mouth and thy heart. That is the word of faith which is preached. Pastor, Apostle Mary, you have been preaching the word of faith. Remember, it is the word that establishes your faith. So you hear believers say, I don't know if God could do that for me. No. Even right after your apostle and leader stood in the gap and prophesied through the word of God in your life. And that's why some people have not even returned to the house of God. Because they don't have the faith. Oh, come on now. You know what? I, I say it back home. Can I say it here? Can I just be, put me, let, me, let me just do it. You know, I say it home that people have returned to the bars. They have returned to the parties. Without inhibition. But many have not yet returned to the house of the Lord. How is it the unbeliever have enough faith? Oh, you all are helping me tonight. You all are helping me tonight. Trumpet calling here. I'm making sense here. How it is the unbeliever have the faith to return to the ungodly things while those who say they love God don't have the faith to return back to fellowship. I came for you tonight, trumpet call, when the Lord told me to come. I came to let you know that it's time you have your faith mixed into the word. I'm a baker. My name is really Gardner, but see me as a baker tonight. This is the closest I could have gotten, right? So I have the flower. The word is the flower. I had some dumplings, my friend. I had some dumplings yesterday morning. But I had them fried. The girl, like she didn't hear, I didn't want it fried. I wanted it boiled. But I had some dumplings. Tastes good too. Raised my whole gas like, ooh, I needed some Jamaican dumplings to just break away all the gas that was in my system. <coughs> Watch this. So I'm not making dumplings. I'm making a bread. I have my flour, the word. But I need something to transform the flour from just raw flour to the bread. I need an influencer. Oh, you, you hear what I'm saying to you now? I need the influence of faith. Like the yeast. Oh my God. I, I'm making a point to you just so that you understand. 
Because until I put the influence in the flower, it will stay flat. It will not raise. So I take now that word and I say, Lord, I thank you for the word that you have given to me. Watch this, watch this. Because the Bible states in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 that God had dealt to every man a measure of faith. Can I just tell you something here now? You are without excuse when it comes to your capacity of faith. Because once you heard the word, the word would have put it. Oh, y'all are helping me tonight. Uh, some measure of faith uh, in you uh, to get you to mix it now with the word. Am, am I helping you tonight? So you may have had a series of teaching on faith. But yet not be able to always see the manifestation of the promises of God unfolding in your life. Not because the word has not been delivered. It has been signed, sealed and delivered. But because every time it was delivered... You allowed the enemy to steal it. So you allowed your faith to be diminished. Anybody want their faith to be lifted tonight? Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. For they that come to God must believe that he is. So one of the things I love, Apostle, that, that the Lord showed me is this. That many times we think is just our faith being exercised in God. But because God made the deposit and give a measure of faith in us. Watch this. It is God that gives you the influencer. To be able to have the capacity to mix it with his word. So you know, you know, you know, you know what, what I love about that? Watch this. It's Eccles. What's your name? Eccleston. Yeah. Love the work you're doing with the cars, man. Praise the Lord. And so it is God that gives you, sir, the faith to mix it with his word. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying here. All he wants you to do. Is take responsibility to make the corresponding actions because faith without so in, in this new covenant that we have received, it is God's faith in man being exercised but the one that has to exercise God's faith is us as men you see some of us waiting on God to exercise the faith listen God gave you the word he gave the faith he gave the teachers he gave the preachers oh my God it's time for you to get up and say I believe what the Lord has said and I am not turning back I will take what the enemy has stolen from me You see, in this season, if we are to be able to accurately migrate into the purposes of God, into the promises of God, you need to be responsible. 
And one of the areas in the body of Christ, what we have not always taught the believers, is that you could get as excited as you feel you could get tonight. But when this word is done preached, if you don't take the responsibility to go back down on your knees and say, God, I believe your word that no weapon that is formed against me, it shall not prosper. Lord, you promise that I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above and not beneath. I go forth because when the kingdom of God suffered violent, the violent will get up and actively take it. Can I tell you something? That the Lord said to me sometime last year when we wrapping up the, the Lord said to me, Every believer must become an active participant in their breakthrough and deliverance. I have stopped calling people all the time to lay hand on them. Because you're working my heart, but you're not mixing your faith with the word. Somebody asked me the other day, do you do deliverance because they don't see the big set I say, yes, I do deliverance. Every message I preach should be bring deliverance. But see, you, you like the show. You want the show, but you don't want to do the work. And in this season, you will have to do the work. I just say something Apostle Mary this is not the walk I'm talking about you can spin like a topper you will just get giddy but it's not that God is saying it's the walk is getting up when your back is against the wall and say if I perish I perish but I am going to see the king You see, listen, I, I plan to be here as long as I need to be. I, 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 I'm just saying that because I know that some of you need some. Uh, we, listen, I'm tired of always having to use a jumper cable uh, to light your fire when you have the Holy Ghost uh, that should give you fire. I'm tired uh, of always having uh, to get you uh, to do what God wants. Uh, it's time uh, you rise up. Uh, This is the season. Church, just, 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 just listen to me a minute. This post-pandemic season could just be the beginning of what is to come that is worse. And if we do not know now how to mix our word with faith somebody just do this say Lord help me mix Lord help me mix help me mix just symbolic just symbolic say Lord I want to mix the word with faith I don't want to hear the word that when I'm sick and I have to always call and worry if I go dead to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord I will mix the word with God's faith in me Let me say that again. Because you need to understand this. It is being persuaded. Having full confidence. It is a conviction, not a consciousness. 
I'll say it for you, Pastor Mark. I'm glad you asked. Hallelujah. Uh, what you need to understand that the faith that you need is not a consciousness. It is a conviction. The devil is also conscious of God. He's also convicted that he cannot win. But he tries everything to get you to lose. So you need to move from just a consciousness to the conviction that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody just declare it. I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me as I mix the word with faith. You see, if you don't mix it, then you can't see it. Let me say that again. If you don't mix it, you can't see it because Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is... Faith is... The substance of things what? And the evidence. The title deed. In other words, I haven't seen it, but because of my faith in God, I know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which I ask or think. Trumpet call ministry. Those of you that are joining us online on the various platforms, this night we're talking to you. We're not here to impress you. We're here to challenge you tonight. To understand the season of the church. If there was ever a time for us to be assured of the very nature of God to be assured of the very name of God to be assured of the word of God to be assured my God uh, of the spirit of God being with us if there was ever a time for us to be convinced uh, it is now I'm about to close. I'm not filling out an application, but Apostle, if you need me, I'm here for you anytime. I just feel led to say because it's important that we understand that this race is not for the swift nor for the sure. Can I speak to you a little bit, Apostle? Because I know as a leader, the things that I've had to go through in this season. And I know that you've demonstrated the faith of God to this congregation. Because had it not been for God that was on your side, you could not have been standing here still. And somebody needs to give God the glory for this woman of God. Because she has demonstrated the mixture of the faith with the word to have you back here to give God the glory. I speak strength into you, Apostle. I speak a time of refreshing right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the outpouring of the Holy Ghost over your life. That that thing that may have troubled you in the last year, two years, uh, the worry, the concerns, the weight, the burden of God uh, for this ministry, uh, I decree in the name of Jesus uh, that you will continue to rise uh, and to continue to soar. Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, we give you the glory uh, because we know uh, that our soul uh, is escaped uh, like a bird uh, out of every snare of the fowler the snares are broken 
in the name of Jesus uh, understand something here just before I close uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please God what tells me is that faith is mandatory uh, somebody say it's mandatory uh, because without it nothing happens uh, you could shout how much you want to shout uh, you could jump how much you want uh, to jump uh, until you learn uh, how to call on God in faith that's the first one James chapter 2 and verse 19 states this you believe that there is one God even the devils believe that and shudder so one of the things that God is telling us right there it is not a mere belief that's why I told you it moves from just your consciousness to a conviction because the devil also believes and he shakes could you imagine that apostle the devil believes that there is one God and he trembles and there are believers who say they believe and they feel no effect at all about God Galatians chapter 3 and 11 also gives us that here Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 says this but the just shall live by faith faith is not <laughs> that's right faith is not something we put on because of our felt need hear, hear, me, hear me now I want to tell you something that may sound very contradictory, but I want you to take it as the word of God is saying it to me. You do not need faith for your felt need. If you go to Matthew chapter 6, he says, Take no thought for your life. What you will eat, what you will drink, wherewith you shall be clothed. All of those things are your felt need. You do not need it because if you are in Christ seeking his kingdom first, he says all these things shall be added on to you. Where do you have your biggest struggle? On your felt needs. You are God help you with our car, help you with our work. Help you with food. You, you have, most believers have their biggest struggle in the area of their felt need. Wait, wait, get quiet. I know you're starting to get quiet now. Because up until tonight, you thought that faith was just to satisfy your felt need. And can I say to you, just to take it up a notch, faith is not just for your felt need, but faith is really for your assignment. Because I know that if I am in God, He will take care of all of my felt need, but I need faith to stand up against the roaring lions to stand up in the midst of the fiery furnace that's where I need faith am I helping you tonight I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 11 and for everyone that is mentioned in the hall of fame of faith Watch what it starts with. By faith. The eyes of your understanding just get like, Woo. By faith, every one of those mentioned was able to fulfill their assignment. Not one of them, it was mentioned about them just wanting a house, a car, a husband. To go to the USA, to go to Canada. I 
And so we have been occupied ourselves calling it warfare. Trying only to meet our felt need and not attached to the vision of God for the house to the woman of God to fulfill the assignment of God in the earth. So, so watch this. When you should be sowing, you're keeping it. You know why? You have to buy the clothes. You see an outfit you want to come to the said service. You see how, you see how, you see how the devil has confused us? So you have learned how to mix your faith with the word or the word with the faith because you studying, you think your faith is for felt need. You are only burdened with what burdens you and you are not yet burdened with what burdens God. <laughs> Apostle, if, if you do a lineup, Apostle Mary, if you do a lineup of how people talk in church, in ministries, you will see where their burden is. Apostle, me not get no money yet, me... I ain't get no grocery. You know how hard it is. I uh, say I don't know if I if I even have money to come to church. I uh, say you know the children going back out to school, uh, and I, I have no money for the books. Uh, and I, so I didn't pay my tithes this week uh, because you know I give an offering. I say I give an offering, but I didn't give my tithe because you know I couldn't give my tithe. So I hold some because my grandmother needed some money. I say, and if you had some faith, you would have gone by your grandmother and said, in the the name of Jesus rise up and walk I am finished but I done because you see this is an anointing that I can't if it leaves me I, I just have to leave it but I want you to understand until you mix it, put the influence of faith on the word. And you stir it in the word. You keep that. So when something comes to you and you're afraid, you say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked and the enemy come up against me? To eat my flesh, they stumble and they fall. But you see when it not mix you're ducking and running when it not mix you feel the enemy omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient because some believers pray as if the enemy is omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient you know? it did not profit them not because they didn't get it. It did not profit them because they weren't willing to mix it. And then you watch the pastor and say she could do better. So long we right here. We could have we could have done track. We could I don't know why did this sticking in this church. Oh God, look how long. No, you need to rise up. Can I tell you something that all your leader need to do is to give proper godly guidance and lay the platform for your for you the perfecting of the saints for you to do the work you see you think she needs to do all the work no her work is to get you to do work my work is to get the people in divine dominion to do the work my work is to challenge them to go do the work. I don't have to go on the field. I don't have to go. On. I need to travel and declare in the nations of the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you want that to be in everything where you just toe in the line. You playing tag I'm always playing. Today you're on this side.
person? I'm finished. No, no, I, 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 it's, it sounds probably jokey to you, but this thing is real. If you have been hearing about faith over the last couple of months and weeks, and you have not shifted, it's no longer the, 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 the leadership. It is your own indiscipline, inaccurate, lazy, rebellious lifestyle that has caused you to be where you are. And it's time we tell believers that they have been for too long warming the bench and not taking up their rightful place in God. Can you imagine that leaders still have to tell you what to do and you are a regular person in the house of God and the ushers still have to tell you come to the front if you're early you're not allowing the faith to be mixed into the word because you have a rebellious spirit you believe that when you come here the church is the only place believers come and think they could do what they want Everywhere else you go, you fall in line. And you cut. <laughs> let, let me say it for you, Apostle. Let me say it for you. Everywhere else you go, you fall in line. But you come to the church and try to prescribe to God how you must serve Him. Do you go by the doctor telling the problem and write your own prescription? So why do you come to the house of God where God has appointed his leaders to help you mix the faith into the word and then tell God, it not going to happen so. And then we sit down watching each other. And you know what was the worst about it? We call it spiritual warfare. Tonight. Tonight trumpet call. Tonight people of God. You watching us online. Tonight is the night. That we say Lord. Teach us. How to mix influencer of faith with the word because you see the, the Holy Spirit is the activator of the word faith is the influencer that causes it to grow so you have the word you have the spirit that activates you to interaction that commissions you to do what God wants but then the faith is the influencer that when it jump into the word It changes even the very chemistry of the thing. How much mixing have you done lately? Stand with me tonight. Can I tell you that the word of God is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction in righteousness <laughs> that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works it's not just profitable for excitement it is profitable for doctrine reproof and correction in righteousness that you may be thoroughly furnished Father, tonight, just lift your hands before God. I am not one to believe that the impact of a sermon is by everybody running to the altar. The, Im 
<laughs> the impact of this message it's you going and meditate on it and spending time in the presence of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to activate the mixing of your faith with the word Lord your word is like unto yourself the entrance of your word gives light we thank you tonight God in so many areas sometimes of our lives we fall short of your glory we fall short because of a lack of wisdom and understanding tonight oh God we have heard your word we have heard and understood that there must be a connection between the preached word, the rhema, and the faith that you have given us. Father, touch your people tonight. Come on, you know you have some struggles right there. Just lift your hands, lift your voice, and begin to cry out to God in the name of Jesus. For your word says that whatever is not in faith is sin. And so tonight in the name of Jesus just as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead but we pray that there will be a resurrection there will be an awakening of the faith of the Lord God in our lives that we will mix it that we will challenge ourselves to believe in the God that is able father take all the praise touch the lives of your people those that are being hindered harassed oppressed uh, by the enemy we declare that that stronghold is broken now uh, in the name of Jesus uh, those that are frustrated uh, we declare now in the name of Jesus uh, oh God those that are heavy you have not given us uh, the spirit of heaviness uh, but the God and the praise uh, and by faith uh, we stand on the promises uh, of God uh, by faith uh, Oh God, we run uh, on the mountains. Uh, we run uh, on true troops uh, in the name of Jesus. By faith, uh, we declare that we are victorious. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give God the glory and just magnify him. Come on. Just magnify him. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. I raise, I raise. 